space, the final frontier, is not the topic of today's podcast. Good afternoon, ladies, gents, and Pikachus, back once again with the Wikipedia podcast, episode six. Uh, we shan't be talking about Star Wars, regrettably, because I love uh, Star Trek. Oh my god, yes, we shan't be talking about Star Trek, regrettably, even though I love it. Uh, we shall instead be talking about the next generation. I'm talking about the next generation of people, our family, and uh, the family of our friends. How are they doing? Not very well, is what I hear. Uh, several of my friends, and actually my own family, and me, bemoaning the loss of family members to socialist radicalization via social media. <gasps> so, with the long intro out of the way, let's have a look at radicalization. This is actually a re-upload, so uh, skip to 15 minutes if you've already seen this. In the gap left by religion, it's an answer to the question of what should we be doing with our lives on Earth. Kind of a bit of a melancholy video, this one, but it's really important that we all know this. Now, I've just recently lost both my sisters to radicalization. They're sadly completely gone from our family now. And it doesn't look like there's any hope of figuring it out. My whole family is destroyed by it. They're all arguing, they're all completely depressed. And this could happen to you. This can happen to anyone. We were the least likely people for this to happen to. So let's have a look on the question of what do we do with our lives if we don't have God to provide purpose and meaning and some kind of pathway to a logical, joyful end. What do we do with our lives? That's a good question to address. And if you say, or anyone says, I have the answer. I know what you should be doing. I know what you should be doing. Fighting for social justice. You should be fighting for social justice. You sh you, you, it's a reason to get up in the morning. It's a reason to go out campaigning in the afternoon. And it's a reason to fight over the dinner table and um, tell your family that they're bigots. Sadly, this is very, very familiar to me. It's exactly what happened in my family. One day we're all getting along fine. Then the next day we're sat at the Christmas dinner table. And if you dare make a joke and someone laughs, the person who laughs and the person who made the joke are now racist bigots. And there's a huge drunken argument at the dinner table on Christmas day, completely destroying the tradition of Christmas, family, sit down, putting the year to one side, being thankful that you've got such great food and that you're in peace and safety and you've got a family. But that wasn't meaning enough for them. So I wonder why that is. Why does social justice give them meaning where traditional family life and um, looking for peace doesn't? Oh. This is um, this is purpose of a kind. And, and by the way, sorry, one other thing, which is, of course, it it says, I mean, this is the real attraction. It says in a quasi-religious manner, in fact, it's better than religion, isn't it? Because religion says if you sort these things out, then in a life to come, you will find um, salvation. And the social justice activists and the intersectionists and the much more say, if you do all of these things, we can get justice here on Earth. So Douglas absolutely nailed his description there of fanatical ideologies and why if you don't have something in place already to provide you with life's meaning you're going to look for it elsewhere so it's a bit of a sad indictment on this country's cultural and educational structure that people can spend seven years in school two years in college and four years in university and come out and have no meaning to their life and think they need to be a terrorist effectively in order to be relevant see the thing is when you're with religion, I mean, I can only speak for myself having experience with Judaism and Christianity, but this kind of thing is frowned upon. If you're a man of God or a woman of God, this kind of behavior is completely off limits. It's the opposite of the religious theory. Religion teaches you patience, live a good life, and if you die having lived a good life, then you get your reward. Whereas radicalism is like, we will go and get our reward today and we'll beat the hell out of a bunch of coppers in order to get it. So it's actually very, very backwards. It's the opposite of what they think they're doing. This virtue signaling, this morality falseness, it's the opposite. I mean, you can see here, these are people behaving badly. Really makes you think though, doesn't it? How do you take a regular person out of a scenario like this, a really actually happy, joyful, 
positive, friendly and warm scenario, surrounded by a loving family, eating great food and generally just enjoying the luxuries of being a Westerner. When there's people starving everywhere in the world, like 50% of the world has nothing. Yet here we are, sat eating turkey, roast potatoes with our heating on, giving each other presents. So what do you have to do to convince someone that being a protester or a, um, a radical extremist is better than that? Well, it's a difficult one to answer, but I'm going to have a go. So here we go. The answer, ladies and gentlemen. Fighting for social justice. Now, if we take all the irrelevant words out of that, we've got fight, social justice justice now let's think about that what does fight mean fight means say if i was going to fight someone i have to locate them i have to classify them as an enemy i have to go up to them and then i have to fight them until they agree with me that's what fighting means now in a social context fighting is usually a bad thing so how do they convince these people that fighting in a social context is good well what they do is they tell you everything's already bad so any change is a good change i think that was uh, gandhi or maybe no nelson mandela who said that any change is a good change especially when your government has been in power for some time he said that in the mid 90s but he was talking about an african dictatorship that had been strangling the country for years and years it was like the saudi family it was a family that controlled this whole country it's really strange that people who do this don't know anything about history or they might look back to apartheid South Africa as the actual root of modern racism. Nelson Mandela literally gave up his entire, uh, the most time of his life, years and years and years to fight racism in favour of Europeans who were being, um, you know, racially attacked and killed in apartheid South Africa. And then they started doing it as well. But what I don't understand is how they can relate this, what we can see here, to modern day England, where there's absolutely nothing like that and the roles are completely reversed. And that's why I call it a madness, because you really have to put yourself in a prehistoric attitude and frame of mind and swallow absolute lies, as well as getting emotional in place of other people, because it really doesn't affect you in this country. All of that has to be made possible in order to convince a sane, regular, peace-loving person that the world is poison, everything is evil, and the only way to change things is to smash everything to pieces and start from scratch with nothing. Now, once again, this sounds very, very similar to another group of people's politics who aren't particularly friendly to this country and that would be your socialists, your communists. They also believe that the everything about society should just be washed away, started from scratch, and everybody should be take you know, everyone should be stripped of all their wealth and be given back to everyone equally. So everyone thinks, oh great, so that means the entire economy, say the entire economy is like two hundred pounds and there's two hundred people that they think they're each going to get a pound and then they'll spend a pound and it will be worth the same as, as before. But they don't understand economics. If you do that and everyone's got a pound, now a pound is worth nothing because everybody's got a pound already. So that means the lowest amount you're going to want to sell something for is two pounds. But everyone's only got one, so nobody on their own can afford to buy anything. And there's no one selling anything anyway. In fact, Anyone who recognises what merely meal is will know what happens in these kind of societies. Mass starvation leading to a genocide. People trying to escape the country and being shot in the back because no one's allowed to know what happens in there. It's exactly like Soviet Russia. So anyway, relating that back to the current day and explaining this madness, how do they do it? Well, it's social media. One person can create a thousand accounts and then use AI to do a thousand messages a day on each of those accounts. So that's 10,000 messages a day and just continually repeat, propagandize, dogmatize and show people videos and posts and everything and just lie to them until they're totally convinced and wound up and they're looking for a fight. 
And that's where the problem is. As soon as they're looking for a fight, a social fight, in order to obtain justice, they're righteous. The same way I am as a Christian when I do something charitable. So it's very, very dangerous and very destructive. But we're coming up to the conclusion now. So um, we've gone through how people get radicalised, why they're susceptible and vulnerable to radicalisation when their life has no meaning. And that's taken up to the present day where, um, well, we've got a schism, haven't we? So I think the answer to it is silence, effectively, and patience. When people want to drag you into these ideological discussions, you have to be smart and use your eyes and assess them. Are they going to be reasonable in a negotiation? Or are they already dead set in their opinion and they're just speeching to you? You know, they're just telling you, rah, rah, believe me, rah. That's an ideologue. And that's exactly what we're dealing with. So like I say, identify the ideologue, identify the fight coming your way. It's not a discussion, it's not a debate, it's a social justice fight. Identify the target as an enemy and fight them until they agree. So the only way to resist that is to go, no, nope, I'm sorry, I'm backing out of this, I'm not going to fight you today, I'm not going to say anything, just agree, smile, yep, you're right, and then get the hell out of there. There's no other way to deal with it. You have to just let these people um, organically cycle through to the end of their belief system and let me tell you what that is they attack each other funnily enough when there's no white people when there's no bigots when there's no racists when there's no justice to be had they still need it because it's not like God where you have a meaning that doesn't require you to do anything as long as you live a good life social justice warriors Another indication, what is a warrior, a person whose entire life is about training to fight and then fighting. So your social justice warriors and their fights are literally one way. There's no convincing these guys. So just don't even try. Just back away. Let them naturally start attacking each other. When they run out of targets, they'll hit face inwards and they'll, you know, kill each other effectively. And then they'll come back with a tail between their legs. Now, I told my family this when it was happening and they didn't listen. So please, 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 if this is anything similar or familiar to something that's happening in your life and you've got concerns and you've gone to them with your concerns and it's made them completely sharp shop or go no contact, which is another ideological mystery of how that works. I have no idea how that does work. But like I say, if this is happening to you, you can actually get in touch with me. Leave me a comment or something and I'll try and help you out. But it's absolutely vital that you yourself don't get dragged in because there's two possible results from that. One is you join them and two is they disconnect you. Neither one of those is ideal. And you can tell their entire ideology has been designed in order to create unsolvable uh, arguments that lead to fighting, which is what they want. Social justice fights fighting for social justice and being a warrior of social justice. Oh, so just be careful of that. And that's the end of this video. I pray to you, I pray to you, God, that this doesn't happen to anyone who's watching this video. And if it has already happened to you, then please get in touch with me. That's all I have to say on this. So um, God bless the people who resist. And I shall see you in the next one. Bye now. You know what, it's not my greatest work, but I'm, I'm proud of that video. That was an early one as well. So anyway, as we're, uh, you know, we're nearing the Christmas months now, the lead up to Christmas starts in September now for some godforsaken reason. Um, and I find that Christmas is usually the time when you're going to have family arguments, yes, 
Um, but if you have an estranged family member, i.e. if someone got radicalised into some daft politic and started calling you a bigot because you didn't agree and swanned off, Christmas and times like that, family times, that's when they're going to miss you the most. That's when the tragedy of their isolation and their stupidity, if it's ever going to occur to them, that will be the time. What that means is you don't have to be a fortune-telling dog to reason that one of these estranged family members may be um, vulnerable to feelings about you. They might be willing to contact you or even come and visit you over the Christmas period. Possibly. Provided we don't screw it up for ourselves. What this means is, um, I think personally, when someone's been radicalised into some daft politic, they're not being objective, they're not being reasonable, so expecting them to be logical and reasonable, it's a fail. Um, in addition to that, if you get dragged down to their level of acting the fool, uh, they'll fight you as a fool and they'll beat you with experience. And then looking back, you're just as bad as them, so it validates their current position. So the way to avoid it is just to not engage at all. Don't have any arguments with them, don't do any of that stuff. If they try to bring it up, um, go into like, I'm really hurt and upset mode and then just back off and be silent. Do not under any circumstances. Uh, allow yourself to be baited or provoked into saying or doing something you will later regret. And the reason, dear ladies, gents and Pikachus, is this. In the end, when everybody gets back together and sits around a table, everything you say and do, and everything you've previously said and done, at that point will need to be excused, or at least, um, you know, reason discussed. So uh, you want to be in a position where only 2% of that conversation is you saying, oh, bygones are bygones. You want the majority of that conversation to be them getting the chance to explain things to you. And they'll probably take that chance and break down in tears, give you a hug if you let them. Obviously, you don't want to keep interrupting and getting angry, which will be the temptation because the wounds are going to be there. But you just have to remember, they're the one who's brainwashed. You are the one who has reason. They are the chaotic, messed up, um, you know, running in terror, coming back with their tail between their legs person. You're supposed to be the stoic, you know, shoulders back, stiff upper lip. You offer stability. That's the thing they don't have, you see. When, some, when someone gets radicalised, it's all completely new to them. It's a new environment, new politics, new people, new pressures. When they work out that it's not as good as what they had, and it's still just as chaotic as it ever was, and it's likely to get worse, they're going to want to come home where it's nice and calm and peaceful and stable and everything's recognisable. It's very easy to get along with people because everybody knows the rules. Traditional rules. Uh, so yeah, keep that in mind coming up to Christmas. I'm not saying impose yourself upon people who have gone no contact, made it clear they don't want to be contacted by you. Like I say, every time you contact them, they'll use that. You're giving them ammunition. They'll use that against you in future. So don't do that. Just be the beacon of hope that you always were to them, or hopefully you always were. I know I have been in my family, <laughs> though they will disagree. Just shine a light of peace and hope, and if they really need it, they'll come and gravitate back to it. You know, in the choppy seas, you look for a port, a recognisable one, hopefully. So, but any port, if you you know, if the weather's really bad. So that's how you got to think about radicalised people. They're like a drift in horrible choppy seas and lightning and you know rain and all the rest of it. And um, at some point they're going to panic. When they panic, they're going to go away from the thing that's causing it, the source of the trouble, and they're going to go back towards what they know, despite having told you that they fucking hate you and <laughs> the rest of the rubbish that they come out with. They're, they're going to follow, not a crow, they're going to follow their heart. They're going to come back to you. So, um, yeah, just keep that in mind. Be ready for it. Have your strategy set. Like I say, don't fall into any traps. Don't say anything you can't explain later. And like I say, if you want to hear the whole unadulterated truth from them about what happened and their apology, if you're going to get one of those, um, that conversation needs to be about them, not about you and what you said. You, you want to have the minimal input in that, nothing to apologise for apart from the stuff you've already done. Um, uh, let bygones be bygones. You don't want to dwell on anything. Just let them, bleh, you know, come out with it all and then say, it's fine, it, it's going to be okay. There you go. Stability, family, traditional Christmas, fucking sorted. So, uh, I'm going to go and have a cup of tea now. So, I hope you enjoyed that, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye now. That's the jewel of democracy, really, isn't it? Stability. When everyone else is going crackers, and their life's mental, and it's chaos, they'll come back home. 
So just be patient, steely, don't do anything dumb, and I'll see you next time. Bye.